Welcome to a look inside Harold Jacobs Elementary Algebra Book. This is a algebra book from the middle of the last century actually, so it's one of the older, more traditional algebra books. This one is actually from a pretty early printing of it. This is an old one. You can see it's tarred up and stuff, but it's been used a couple of times. I've used it with a couple of my students, and this is a pretty classic traditional text. So I thought we'd take a look inside it. I'll have a review typed up with pros and cons and what my takes on it are from using it for a couple of years. But let's look inside the book. So when you open Harold's book, you'll see here that this is first a hint that this was actually used in a school system in a classroom setting. So it's going to not have a lot of directions for you as the parent, but there'll be sections for the children to read. There are these comics that are kind of throughout the whole book. My students have found that to be very fun to have those there. Let's take a look at the table of contents. You'll see here that we start the first unit with fun, fundamental operations. We talk about addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, the distributive property, all of those basic arithmetic that they should know before coming into Algebra 1. Then we go right into functions and graphs. We go into integers where we talk about working with integers and get into a little bit of graphing introduction to get ready for, for more advanced graphing later on. We talk about rational numbers, equations in one variable that is solving for x, like x plus 3 equals 5, solving for x. Also rate problems. I found the rate problems in this book to be rather difficult at times, so it's definitely a challenge, for especially for students who aren't nat naturally mathematically gifted. There's equations in two variables. That's dealing with the graphing linear equations, y equals ax plus b. Then we get into simultaneous equations in unit 7. That's where you're actually solving for two unknowns in two equations. They go right from that to exponents. Then we have a midterm. A midterm review, which is really great. There's two reviews in this. There's the midterm review and there's the final review. And there's a little bit of review in some of the exercises, and I'll show that to you when we get there polynomials, where we get into monomials and polynomials and get into factoring. In the next chapter, we factor. They actually divide polynomials right here, which is a pretty advanced algebraic concept. Fractions, we get into some complex fractions. This is algebraic fractions, so it's not just converting three-fourths to a fraction with 10 as the denominator. It's, it's something much more difficult than that. We've got square roots, quadratic equations, that is factoring them, which we've done before, but also factoring them to solve for x, to see where it is at the, where it hits the x-axis, the polynomial functions, graphing quadratic equations. Um, we get into real numbers here, where we talk about the different numbers, irrational numbers especially. Fractional equations, where we're really getting into, we're kind of combining what we learned in the fraction section with the polynomial section, and we're looking at proportions and solving for the for the ratios. Inequalities, where we look at some inequalities. And number sequences is what we actually end with, just the basics of arithmetic and geometric number sequences. And then there's the final review. So you can see I've written days on the side for my own use. Um, that's obviously added in. If you did a lesson a day or four lessons a week, I think I had about 135 lessons in here, which you can definitely do in a school year. So you have the letter at the beginning and then your first lesson. Each lesson has a, usually they have a comic at the beginning, not necessarily. Then they have the lesson where you read a section and then there's the exercises. Now the exercises tend to be in, this is the pre-exercise. So this is chapter one. So you've got a little picture and a story and then you've got the what you read. And then you have set one, set two, and set three, and set four. Now I think the newer versions of this book don't necessarily have set two. Um, the way it works is set one is generally a review. So that's a review of the previous lesson. It's a review of something in a previous chapter as you get further in the book. It's some uh, more of a review of more in depth of older stuff. Then we go into set two and that's all directly related to the lesson that you just learned. So you do set two. Set three is basically a repeat of set two only with different numbers. And just as an FYI, we'll get there eventually, the set two answers are in the back and set three answers are not in the back. So if you want your student to be able to check their work, set two is a great assignment for them. If you want to test them and give them a test, set three is great because there's no answers in the back. So you can use, you could do all of them or you could just say, oh, just do set three today or do set one and two or do set one and three. Set four tends to be a puzzle or a 
word problem or something a little harder than the other than the other sets. It's usually just one problem and it's kind of advanced. And that's always a fun challenge. Then you go on to lesson two and it's the same sort of thing. You read, set one for review, set two, set three, and set four. And then lesson three. And these pictures, as I mentioned, are really fun. My students loved them. They loved looking through it just for the fun of it. A lot of times the stuff at the beginning of a lesson, like I'll just stop here just because this is where we were, is actually a little bit of a history lesson. This one's about Ptolemy, about the history of the word nothing as a digit. Did you know that the number zero didn't exist for a long time? We had no way of representing the number zero. So this is some math history. They'll learn a bit about Ptolemy, about Pythagoras, about algebra. It's just really fun to, to be able to take some of that in, into context and learn a little bit of the history of it. Um, so let's skip ahead to the end of this. Let's skip to the end of chapter two. So you'll see at the end of chapter two, if I can get there, there is a summary and review. And this is basically your terms. It's basically in lesson one and three, we talked about functions and this is what we learned about functions. It's a recap of each of the lessons in the unit. And then you have a review, review exercises. You have a set one and you have a set two. And those both tend to be kind of like what set two and three were in the actual lessons. They are similar, they have different numbers, but they follow the similar format. Like you'll see here in set one, the first question, the first, sorry, assignment is to draw a pair of axes and then graph these points. And you'll see in set two, it's the same thing. Draw a pair of axes and graph these points, but the points are different. So it's the same sort of practice in each set. So you go all the way through, you have 17 chapters. So I'm just going to skip to the end because that's basically every chapter repeats that. You have a midterm review in the middle. And then right at the end here, we have answers to the set two exercises, which I told you were in the back for each chapter. There's answers. Now there's no helps back here. There's no, oh, did you not get this one? Let me help you with that. Or here's a hint. There's none of that in the back of this. They're expecting you to use this text with an instructor, with somebody who knows what they're doing. This is actually the text that Skio uses for our algebra review unit course that we have. So we did 17 units and they all follow these units. So if you're using this book and you're in our webinars, then you should have the help that you need to do this with an instructor and be able to ask those questions that you have about the homework. And it, of course you can do any algebra text with our webinar and with our course, that's totally fine. The concepts in most algebra one classes are pretty much the same. And then in the back we have an index to look up terms. And that's basically the Jacobs Algebra book, what's actually in the book. I'll write up some information about it, my take on it, how it works. It, generally speaking, just as a quick comment, this is a really solid Algebra 1 text and it actually goes into a lot of the Algebra 2 information as well. So I highly recommend this book, especially for just your student who doesn't hate math but doesn't love math, just needs to do Algebra 1 because it's a requirement and you want them to get a good solid Algebra 1, this is the book for you. Now if you have a student who wants to be an engineer, they could absolutely use this book. But if they love math, there are some other things in the market that might challenge them a little more. But this is a, this is a challenging textbook in itself. If you have a student who absolutely hates math, they can use this textbook. It's absolutely fine. It'll work. They will continue to not like math, but you can't love everything in life. So this is a great book. I hope you like it. If you have any questions, you know where to find me on my website at skioacademy.com. That's S-C-I-O-A-C-A-D-E-M-Y.com. Thank you.